Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about Miss Marvel. This is a Disney Marvel TV show. And right off the bat, I'll say it is very good. This might be one of those things I chalk up to. Maybe not for me, but... There's so much good in this. There's a lot of really heartfelt moments. It's so good at doing the culture thing. Now, mind you, this is not my culture, right? But it was really interesting. You could feel the love and heart that went into this. Just on so many levels, there is some great, you know, stuff going on throughout this whole show. Mind you, it's only six episodes, and it's created by Bisha K. Ali, starring Iman Bellani, Matt Lintz, Yasmin Fletcher, Zenoba Shroff, Mohan Kapoor, and by the way, this list goes on and on and on. This is a great cast, even some of the ancillary you know, side characters really do well. There are a couple of nitpick type things I'll get into, but I just want to sum this up in the beginning as this is not so much experimental TV, but it has some flavor of that in there. Some really, you know, fun stuff going on that you don't see in everyday TV or superhero TV. And I'm going to give it props for that. This is, um, Something I'm sure people love. <laughs> I'm not even going to dispute that. Well, mo like most anything, it's people are going to love something. But when you try to balance that, do I love it and, you know, how good is it critically? Or, you know, if you're going to use some method, this is going to pass with flying colors. I just feel a little weird about certain things. And like I said, I'll get to that in a bit. But you got to give props to these actors and actresses. This is a, um, a different type of feel for like an action comedy, uh, you know, coming of age thing. And you're blending all these things together. And it's just so much good in this. There's a little bit of a lull in places where I'll, you know, I'll talk about some of my nitpicks about it. But this is just fun from the beginning. Interesting, heartfelt when it. It kind of knows when to pull your heartstrings. And when you're dealing with this in a sense of, you know, it's a culture thing and it's, um, you know, there's a certain aspect that you're waiting to be bogged down with. And it does it well. It does a... Well, you see, again, I feel weird saying this because it's not my culture. I don't know about, you know, any kind of, you know, ins and outs of... Uh, you know, what is really the fundamental, you know, nature of being Pakistani and Muslim. Although I probably know a lot about the Quran and stuff because of my atheist background in a sense. But all in all, we're talking about um, things that happen in time. Um, the realization of um, what they call brown people and just the, you know, hardships of a, of, you know, human behavior in any, you know, in any scope. I mean, we can do things about Japanese during the internment camps we have. And I'm like, there are certain places in history where it's not always black and white. It's not, um, you know, being shown as the total good guys or bad guys. And right now I would say that maybe about israel and palestine if you know although i would just favor in palestine's uh, favor in the political realm but got a lot going on here family um culture you know where you're living how you express yourself this all is wrapped up in this really enjoyable fun ride and you know there's not much to not like about it. I'm going to, you know, state some of my things. There's some 
I think are kind of ridiculous, but in the end, there are things to notice that don't I don't agree with. Not in a criteria where, you know, I think you did this bad, more like, you know, I'm not, you know, you didn't pull me in that direction. I wasn't fully immersed. But I know in a room of 10 people, like eight other people are probably going to be in, in that foundation of just building up, you know, being honest. I just think this is going to be um, touted as a really um, solid performance uh, show in general that adds to the Marvel, you know, growing reputation. And I'm going to give props again. I mean, there are shows like Peacemaker. I haven't totally, you know, like there's greatness in things and you'll see them and talk about them. But just like for me, The Boys, which has a great first season and kind of whatever, you know, season two, and you see the greatness in there. It's just not resonating with you. This is that for me, but there's no way I'm not sitting down, young teenagers, if I had kids or whatever, and you got to watch this. This is just going to be fun. There's a message in there. There's so much um, wholesomeness and blending of the dark. And that dark is one of the little problems I'll get to in an overall what's at stake here. And I think that's where the show kind of. You know, it just wavers a little bit. But again, it's a coming of age. You really don't have to do nothing. And one of the things I so love about like Jessica Jones, which I think the first season of Jessica Jones still might be the best written uh, superhero season of TV. And in those days, I say those days, you know, like it's old. You got like 12, 13 episodes. I mean, you know, they played around here and there. The Defenders, which I love, was like eight, I think. In any case, they're going with six, and I'm guessing it feels like for them a real solid story is being told, and it works on a lot of levels. You've got such a family um, environment. The superhero MCU is looming in the distance because of her, you know, fandom obsession with Captain Marvel and in heroes in general. The focus on uh, AvengerCon I thought was cool. There's just a lot to love. A lot of fun had here. Like I said, maybe not so much experimental TV. Or like risky as like WandaVision. Because you still look back at WandaVision. Those first three episodes. You probably lost an audience there. But those who stuck around to the end. Who stayed with it. Were amazed in my opinion. Yes, there are faults everywhere. Now, in talking about the show and talking about some of the things that I don't agree with, nothing outright disappointed me in the show and made it the overall thing, you know, less of value and feel like I, you know, just misplaced some of my time and I'm annoyed, which has happened, you know. So, first off, you don't have a clear villain unless you want to say. Everything about being a teenager, growing up, going to high school or whatever school, and, you know, you're facing this, these struggles. I mean, real life is hard enough, right? You don't need to be superpower to have a ability, but you want to at least understand or, you know, suspend disbelief that these people live in a world where the Avengers are real. And, you know, these people go around and live in a world where, you know, at any moment, you know, uh, alien invasion is going to happen. So the fact that she's a, you know, a super fan and, you know, going to cosplay just highlights where the villain is sort of missing because they're using a damage control concept from the TV show. I mean, uh, from the uh, comics, but it's hinted at in the Spider-Man movie with is it Michael Keaton? Are they actually damage control? Or did that was the precursor to it? In any case, it's something in the comics. And I didn't buy it. I didn't like the arc of it. Because I felt like too much was cut out. And there's this through line through the whole show. And there's little bits that don't feel right. Where... 
you have this agency and they send out a team. They're obviously not totally greenlit to do what they want to do because they have like a superior that, again, is kind of confusing on what's going on. But go in and do what you got to do or don't do what you got to do in the end and like pull out. I'm not, this is a publicity nightmare. Now, mind you, I'm giving it that credit, but in the, mo- in the show, it just really doesn't pay off in the end. But again, this isn't a show that needs the villain. It doesn't need a Loki or a Thanos. However, when it wraps up at the end, it feels like one of the places the show should have honed in on a little more. Then we get into the Team Ang stuff. And I'm okay with one, maybe two. But when we start to get to three young boy type things that get mixed into Kamala Khan's world and there's this cuteness factor, I just started getting annoyed. Like, I get it with the one friend, and you don't know what's going on, and maybe it's one likes the other more than the other, but the other one is going, and, you know, she's growing up, and she's meeting people, and from the other, from the point of view of her friend who's a boy, he feels, you know, it's that type of thing, right? You know, oh, I have feelings for you, I never expressed them, but now she's looking at other people, we used to be best buds, you know, what's going on there? That dynamic they do, and when they involve the friends and stuff, it falls short because it just feels, I don't know, overdone for six episodes. It just feels like you tried to, everywhere she went, she had to have a cute, quirky, you know, sort of guy she might be interested in. Like, that gets annoying to me. I can understand the one guy in the beginning and the, you know, first type thing that catches her attention and awakens her realization that she's a young woman, you know, that, that type of thing. And in a comedic fashion, it's all coming together and it's fun, but it's one of those things that just bothered me. I don't, you know, particularly care that you kept having to add on to it. I mean, she's in another country and there's another cute guy and he's quirky and you know come on and then when they overall catch it back because now you got like a secondary this might be the real villain you know you want to do new things and stuff but i don't think marvel needs it like you're adding in a new concept of powers and dimension and we've seen this before so much well, when you watch like Iron Fist and things like that and Daredevil, there's already hints in mythology already. Now I'm like confused and didn't they throw in at the end, spoiler, I guess, uh, that the tech friend is sort of implying or says like you have something, something there's even more different about your DNA. Because they did it different, because I know the comic book character Although I quit in 2008, 2010 and collecting comics and I did read online stuff and try to keep up. And I'm a fan of the character, but this feels too engineered. It feels too um, put together for TV, if that makes a difference. And I'm not a fan of the special effects and how they pulled it off. Not in a low quality shit way. But, in a way where I wasn't jiving with what I felt the character was or is in the comics, or a recollection of her. Not personality-wise, because this actress is fucking great. She's one of those actresses, you're probably watching anything. Like, you know, if there's that opportunity. And, really, um... There's some great performances in here. And we're talking about father, mother, brother. There's a tight-knit family thing. And like I said, with the culture and politics. There's the best friend, female running for the board at her mosque. And there's that 
thing that I always roll my eyes at nowadays, but it's fucking ridiculous because religion is stupid, sucks, and people just use it as a shield, and it just fucking annoys me in my atheism sense. And it was good to show their flaws, you know, and it doesn't mean people can't believe what they believe in, but things got to change, right? We got to drag uh, Catholicism out of the Dark Ages, and ooh, you know, New Testament, and is Jesus, and he's all fun and, you know, loving and caring, which is fucking nonsense. But you get what I'm saying. It's like maybe it's time for culture to drag the Muslim Islamic uh, religion out of the Dark Ages and. Let's soften it and give it some, you know, heart and whatever, you know what I mean. Just, it's all bullshit. But anyway, the show is portraying it well. There's just great performances. I mean, people you don't expect, people who show up out of nowhere. Uh, you just remember the culture and there's aunts and aunts and, you know, all that stuff. And it, it just works. It's just real fun. And for me to just highlight some of the things that bother me in the sense of, Hey, you know, I really didn't feel what the stakes were, even though, you know, okay, you're going to break open the veil. There's people, these beings are trying to get home to their dimension. She's kind of related to them, and the dimension will take over her own, will bleed into ours and cause destruction, right? That with damage control, kind of hunting powered people, I didn't buy that shit, and Maybe that's where I didn't feel the um, the storyline kind of course correcting itself because you could have used this agency as a course correction for certain things that you kind of see in the shows that have flaws in them to begin with or inevitability of where do we go with six episodes. And they did a flashback thing to give you the actual story of what happened, because this is a little story going on about the grandma, nanny, and, you know, what happened to her as a kid, because this all starts kind of because Kamala is given, well, no, she sent a gift from her grandmother, and it's a bangle, okay, and, um, it's one of those, oh, I don't have nothing to accent my cosplay costume I made, Put it on and to get superpowers. Now, I think they do a good thing, but they didn't pay it off. Because see, this is where my brain goes in because you know I fancy myself <clears throat> a writer or whatever. But anyway, so she gets this device that activates. She's got this tech friend, and you know he's going to explain things. So apparently, the device unlocks. Your power, because you're from another dimension, and I think they called it the Nor power, whatever. So, in essence, you could see her taking it off and having to develop these powers without this bangle. And I thought that's where a part of her core arc was going to go in my head. Like, okay, it activates her power. The people who will after it will get it back. Right? Because it's like I said, the subplot thing is okay, so we've got damage controls looking for superpowers. They destroy shit and cause damage. Let's go fucking, let's get a lieutenant, fucking whatever her name is, and she goes fucking AWOL. It's just, it just, they didn't buy it. it to me, it was dumb. And the other part is that uh, she finds out her heritage. And these people looking to get home to use the bangle to get to another dimension. And yes, by the way, they hinted that there's supposed to be two. And if you had two, you could do it. But if you use one, it could destroy the world. Or are they saying that even if you had two, it's still too dangerous to try to open up the veil to go back home because you can cause damage to everything here. Anyway, I thought the people who were after it, you know, the, the revealed ancestor family who live hundreds of years that it would be taken from her and she would have to believe and acknowledge all the awareness and awareness brings conviction that type thing where the power was in her the whole time and it didn't go there and by the way that is one of my problems 
that kind of makes me watch things like this and come up with these type of nitpicks that say, oh, maybe the show's not for me. So that's, that's, that's a failure on my part, I guess, because it does influence where I'm going, especially when I could probably have a debate about why I'm right about these other things and how they don't match up. Now, in the long run, this show is going to be touted as a success and a, you know, maybe a breakthrough. She's going to be in Marvels and a little teaser at the end. This is going to be great. However, when I'm looking at a six-episode show, at one point... Okay, so there's an episode uh, that's, like, shorter than most. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do my work, but uh, let's say episodes are 48 minutes. This episode was 38 minutes, and how I know is because as I'm watching it, my brain was shutting off, and I was getting disconnected, and I said, oh my god, how long is this episode? Because there's, there's an episode or two, particularly, where, where I felt that I was just being drawn out, and like, you got six episodes, like, you could have you made this nine, and you, uh, my guess is that they're feeling that some stories deserve only six, and it's a tight-knit, great thing, Let's, so I get that. But I'm watching an episode, and it felt so long, and it was the shortest episode. When I moved the mouse to make to see how much time I had left, I went, "Wait a second! I've only watched 20 minutes of this fucking episode, and it's only a 30 minute, 38 minute episode." To me, that's a failure in that episode. And it, you know, when it comes at a point where you got five episodes, right? So it's not perfection for me. Like there, I can sit here and agree with people why they don't like it or, you know, see flaws in it. But I'm not going to pull back and then throw it out and say it's garbage. No, people are going to love this. This is not like shitty television, you know, where, you know, I'm just a fanboy for it. Um, you know, you got some great stuff and this is one of them. This is going to be up there. I mean, and again, I got to give credit. Marvel doesn't have really bad stuff and if you want to say they do and point stuff out i'm really not going to probably agree in that sense of total garbage nonsense shit i can agree with yeah that's not for me or i was bored you know like the things that you normally get but when you look at a staple of um quality this is like up there they're, they're not doing shitty stuff and i find it ironic that i had a my friend had a conversation in my apartment. And yeah, it's, it's easy these days with the pandemic not being so whatever, but it's, you know, it's rare that we could sit and talk about movies and stuff and do the shit we used to do so much. And a lot of our talks about this, um, you know, because we're fans of DC. I might have more DC comics than Marvel. And my friend is just open-minded, just geek. <clears throat> he doesn't care. There's no fucking old DC's better than Marvel. But, we, you know, we've come to a realization that the DC, you know, the movie universe is sucks balls, okay? Fucking Wonder Woman is great, you know, whatever, but... And the TV shows have been solid. I mean, I don't like the formula of the Flash, the Supergirl, the Arrowverse nonsense. But the Titans, you know, fucking... Fucking awesome. And... But when you look at a whole... I don't have, like, uneasy feelings of the Marvel universe's total thing yeah you want to pick out movies that you didn't like here and there throughout the uh fucking 20 something movies they've done so far sure you want to say this is more hype than quality sure but you know as a whole you got so much work now that they just get the bar they get the you know your guard isn't up so much and it like you're able to be a fanboy and with quality stuff that's so fucking rare do we want to go back to the Corman Fantastic Four movie? And speaking about that, where I was actually getting to with this, with the Batgirl being canceled, which is a fucking joke. I am pissed. Okay? I don't need fucking blockbuster and billion dollar stuff. I need a decent DC product. A heartfelt story. I don't care how fucking street level it is. That'd be like, oh, we're not going to do Jessica Jones. And, you know, because 
It's not this movie. Yeah, so they put it in the fucking TV show. You stream it to HBO Max, like fucking garbage, nonsense, tax write off bullshit. And so those directors did a couple of these episodes, I think. And then as we're talking, like I said, you know, unusual, we get together, we talk movies and stuff. We've always said about DC, you know, the joke is when's the uh, when's Marvel gonna buy DC? This is like it was one of those things that happened back in the past, also. And I'm not kidding you. He comes over to that. We talk about it again. We talk, you know, because we always catch up on all these things that are going on. It's because he's a, one of my, you know, 30 something year plus players of D&D and Marvel super, superhero stuff. And he left, and four hours later, I see the thing posted DC is creating a DC Studios. And they've got a fucking Disney guy, and they've mentioned Marvel and their formula. And one of my, because we were fucking around about it the whole time, we were like, you know, oh shit, we were just talking about that. And one of the things I admitted was, I am happy the way they phrased it. Now, there's this HBO Max Discovery Merge. Like, I don't know what the fuck is actually going on. And regime changes bring new ideas on how to run things. Apparently, they don't want to put out a quality, really good Batgirl because secretly, or whatever, rumors are, none of the execs liked it. They don't think it's quality. They don't want it out there. And you know what? As much as I wanted to see it, maybe they're right because the fucking movies suck. Right? I just, just don't have excitement. I got to rev myself up for fucking Black Adam. And since I'm in the know in certain things, I know that it was supposed to be a fucking bigger movie, and they split it, and Captain Marvel, you know, Shazam 2, and Rock's gonna get his own movie, and then Justice League. Like, uh, what the fuck, man? He's running around talking about the hierarchy, and he's had his own fucking thing for eight years. So it's really bullshit from the beginning. Like, the, Marvel should have just stole the Rock and made him the fucking Hercules and brought him in, but... Alright, yeah, I'm starting to ramble here. Kamala Khan, Miss Marvel, really top-notch show, fun, young, it's got energy, culture, love, heartfelt moments, just great conveying of stories. It kind of falters on certain things with the villain and you know what the stakes are, but as a teenage coming-of-age superhero movie, it's fucking great, a show. And, you know, um, there's just a presence to this Marvel stuff that's just fascinating and good and that quality, the fascination lets you keep coming back and you don't feel, you like I said, your guard is up and DC's got to prove that to me because, you know, Peacemaker's going to be one of those that's on its way there uh, you know, I did the Titans you know, catch up on that stuff and this should be uh, you know recognized for its uh, achievements Miss Marvel, I would recommend everybody watch this. I mean, you could have kids, you don't have to have kids, you know, I don't know. Uh, would I say that, like, uh, we're hardcore, you know, certain, uh, they're going to like it? Maybe not. Like I said, maybe this isn't, you know, geared for, you know, 50-year-old fucking single guys who, you know, uh, angry at the world. I don't know. You know, all the bullshit that's probably out there about girl power, woman power, you know, culture appropriation, and the fucking garbage nonsense. But, you know, show brings it up. They want to talk about these type of, uh, you know, social issues and stuff, and they do it well, in my opinion, and maybe it's just not for me. And, you know, it was such an adorable scene where they're dancing and uh, from the wedding and stuff. There's so much heartfelt stuff that made me smile and feel good inside like hey we can have a good fun message you know we can highlight the problems going on in the world but everything doesn't have to be you know bucking in a fucking um psychiatric uh psychiatrist office which was fucking great i love that show but like there were different tones and marvel's hitting them and good good for them have a whole fucking teenage run and guess what if they do it right you, you gotta better foundation already look at all the stuff they're bringing back 
Charlie Cox is Daredevil. The Kingpin, they've already used with Echo, and this is going to be some interesting stuff going on, and I am all for it. I just like to, you know, talk about the things that do bother me, and these things aren't perfect. And I just think, like, I want to be honest and say, like, they're not trying to get me. You know, they're not. But I can recognize its greatness in areas, its flaws. But it's a total recommendation. Miss Marvel, you know, Jersey City. You know, give props. It's, it's Jersey fucking city. You live in Jersey City. You have any, you know, attachment to it like I do with Brooklyn. It's fucking awesome. I mean, they do that right. It feels, the environment feels so real and you feel for her and you recognize these type of people in the world and the way people grow up and... Oh my god, I put a bracelet on and I got superpowers. What the fuck? And I'm a fanboy of Captain Marvel. Fun stuff. Watch Miss Marvel. It really is a kick. It's, you know, dare I say it's uh, a Dobbs, you know, in a way. Anyway, watch Miss Marvel. Give it a shot. Leave a comment. Like, subscribe. The whole fucking bullshit that I never say because I hate when I fucking hear it so much. Be good, everybody. My best to you and yours. I know it's tough times political-wise, and I might do another one soon, but keep your chin up. Breathe. Three to five seconds into the nose, five to eight seconds out through the mouth. Basically, longer out than in. That's your focus. your clarity. I'll talk to you all next time. Be well.